What's up guys, welcome to my three minute guide on note taking. Now I've always had a love-hate relationship with note taking because on the one hand my notes have always been kind of ugly but they've also been pretty useful in helping me maintain a perfect GPA throughout college. So today I'm going to break down in three minutes my note taking method, the BSDM or BDSM method. Let's get straight into it. Now, before we start, get it out of your head that your notes are meant to replace your lecture notes or your textbook. It's to consolidate your thoughts during the learning process. It's not necessarily the most important thing when it comes to actually studying because you want to more so be doing active learning like practice questions. That's why unless you're in a timed setting, I think that you should never write anything down before you actually understand what you're reading. In my opinion, notes should be like a GPS. You use them to sort of help you get where you want to go in terms of understanding but maybe only a little bit afterwards to see where you actually went. Now, in terms of supplies, we're gonna keep it simple. Definitely keep some white paper on you, but also a notebook, a pen, and maybe some flashcards. And now, if you wanna do everything on an iPad, that, that probably works too. Now, the BDSM method stands for big picture, details, small picture, and memorization. Now first, before you start taking notes, try to find the big picture summaries or figures of what you're learning and copy them down on a blank sheet. For example, if you're learning cell respiration, I might copy down the diagram and maybe how it relates to a couple other metabolic pathways and just keep this sheet separate from all your other sheets. Now next, you'll move on to the detail slash small picture section. Here you'll be taking notes on the individual sections that fall within the big picture. For example, after doing a respiration overview, you might have an entire lesson on the investment phase of glycolysis. It's not that important to take the most pretty notes, but try to keep each small picture topic to its own page. Copy down any useful diagrams or figures, and then after you understand what you've read in first principle terms, meaning in the simplest terms specific to the topic you're learning, write down what you took away from it. For example, for the beginning of the steps of glycolysis, I might just write down like hexokinase, P, arrow, glucose, traps against, brackets, gradient. You can do shorthand, diagram it out, and this will speed things up a lot. The purpose of this is to consolidate what you're learning and make sense of the material as you learn it. It's not to leave that stuff for later. Don't write down things that seem too obvious or details you'll probably never use. Just keep it simple. This is just to help you grasp the conceptual side of things and I would try to refer to the big picture diagram as you go to not get confused about how the small picture topics relate to each other. Finally, you have the M or memorization section. As you're working on the detailed small picture section, a big part of learning also inv involves memorizing. Now any pathways or lists or just things you deem might have to memorize, either write it down on a flashcard or use Anki or RemNote or whatever you use for space repetition, that way you have notes on the conceptual side of things, but also something to help you memorize. After all, these two processes are different. Now when all is said and done, even though this might not be the prettiest way to take notes, I, per I personally think it provides a pretty effective general guideline. It's complete and it helps to separate the conceptual and the memorization side of things. Anyways. Thanks for watching, smash that like button, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Anyway, so a lot of people, I think they make their graphics and stuff on like an iPad, animations, that stuff, or maybe on their computer, but I don't have any of that crap. I just prefer paper and a Sharpie. As you can tell, I'm a uh, Sharpie and paper type of guy, but uh, I've been using a Sharpie so much and inhaling all those fumes, I'm pretty sure this stuff can make you high. I bet that's something Big Sharpie doesn't want you to know about. Stay safe out there, kids.